There is a lot of interest in uh, fibroblast growth factor receptor inhibitors in bladder cancer. Um, there's been several that have, are in development and have some good preliminary data that show good activity in patients with um, FGFR uh, mutations or other alterations in bladder cancer. And so um, bladder cancer still remains an incurable and difficult disease to treat. And so sequencing agents and how we best do that is not entirely known. And so one question is whether people that have tumors with these alterations of, of, of FTFR are best treated with immune checkpoint inhibitors or FTFR inhibitors first. And so one way to try to help us answer that question is to look at patients and see what patients who have FTFR uh, altered tumors, if they're more or less likely to respond to it respond to immune checkpoint inhibitors. And so what we did is we looked at a cohort of our own patients at University of North Carolina and looked to see whether patients with bladder cancer who had FGFR altered tumors were more or less likely to respond to immune checkpoint inhibitors. And so um, we had a cohort of about 66 patients and out of them 15 had um, FGFR alterations. And we sort of define that as any alteration in any of FGFR 1, 2, 3, or 4. And uh, which is about what we've seen with prior literature uh, with a percentage of tumors that have these FGFR alterations. And we found actually no difference in response rate between those patients and patients who didn't have the alterations. If you look a little deeper and you look at actually known pathogenic FGFR3 mutations in tumors, which is the mutations that are felt to be most sensitive to the FGFR inhibitors, though, we found um, none of those patients actually responded to checkpoint inhibitors in our cohort, although the numbers were small enough that it still wasn't statistically significant. And so I think it remains to be seen in a broader cohort and sort of validated in some clinical trials whether some of these patients with, with FGFR3 mutations you know, truly have lower response rates or not. I mean, I think there's a lot of, you know, clinical trial data that's coming out with bigger cohorts and so our next steps I think should both be to analyze those for sort of clinical um, correlation with FGFR alteration status and also sort of look at some of the other predictors so instead of sort of this very broad looking at you know just alteration or not on uh, um, on a genomic level, looking at some of the transcriptomic data or the RNA data and seeing whether there's different gene expression patterns that can actually help us predict uh, which patients may or may not respond, and specifically out of the patients that have FGFR alterations.